Welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So, this is our fourth Iron Man book on this channel, though probably not the fourth time we've talked about Iron Man, <laughs> to be sure. Definitely not. Uh, but this is one of his most seminal stories of all time. I figured if we're going to do Iron Man, we might as well do the ones everyone thinks they know. Right. So, we're doing Armor Wars! Wars, wars, wars. <laughs> and this has been referenced a thousand times. It was so successful, it spawned in Armor Wars 2. A retelling of Armor Wars, uh, an ultimate Armor Wars. How much do you wars? know about the Armor Wars? <laughs> um, not at all. Okay. Oh boy. Well, let me to, let me tell you sixteen more times. There was a secret Wars Armor Wars realm where it was oh. just nonstop Armor Wars. Okay. Wow. So this is pretty stupid. important. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and it, to Iron Man. Yes. And to no one else. This is. I think it's a great idea. And a really fun, well-executed story. Once again, another Iron Man story written by David Michelinie. Uh, this time, with art by Bob Layton, Mark D. Bright, and Barry Windsor Smith does a an epilogue that we may do. Mm. There's really no point. <laughs> Refresh my memory. This is where everyone gets Iron Man armor. No. Okay. <laughs> Because I kind of figured Armor Wars, that would make sense. Yeah, no, so like more like the... company puts out an armor, a rival armor. The opposite of what Ben said. Oh. No one gets an Iron Man suit. What? What? So, <laughs> again, this story is like part of the ongoing saga of Iron Man. Like, there's right. stories in the middle. There's yeah. interpersonal drama. It's just part of the main Iron Man title. Uh-huh. Oh, we have a red and silver yes, suit. Yes, that's the Silver Centurion armor. For my money, my favorite Iron Man suit. I yeah, mean, this one is very different. It's so different. I mean, it's got it was, the Widow's Peak. Yeah, it's, it's got the shoulder pads. The huge shoulder pads. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I always liked it. I like the color and I like the, I like the design. Uh, we kind of got an homage to it in Iron Man 2. That's the suitcase armor that he wears. Mm. But again, it's just exactly like the other one, but silver. It's the and color, red. yeah, the color yeah. scheme. But I love that color scheme. I just think it's dope. It is cool. So Iron Man, in this point in his career, uh, Demon in a Bottle has already happened. Mm. Okay. Uh, so he is a recovering alcoholic. Uh, Stark Industries was taken from him, and he got it back. But he's not as rich as he used to be. But he's still rich enough to pay off people in this book a lot. <laughs> So whatever, like all you need. <laughs> so you it doesn't have any practical impact. No, like it, it, if you were reading Iron Man a lot, you'd be like, well, don't forget, he doesn't have all the money. Like when he has to write a big check, it it hurts him. I right. mean, not any way that you could see, but like in his heart. It you hurts. understand? He used to have like forty billion dollars. Right now he only has like he only 10 has billion. like yeah, ten billion dollars. That's, That's not a, a lot. That's only twenty five percent. Imagine yeah. if you only had twenty five percent of the money you have. Right, I'd be destitute. You'd, yeah. We should, we should throw him a Kickstarter. Save Tony Stark. So Iron Man is flying around. He's doing a demonstration for some generals. Just trying to get some military contracts. Uh, okay. ro and remind me again, people know he's... No. Okay, so no. this is... again, yes. This is the bodyguard. This is the bodyguard, oh, the bodyguard bullshit. Bodyguard. Yeah, but it's, it's getting Girl, to the end. Tony. Actually, they deal with the bodyguard thing in a way I was very disappointed. I'm really disappointed we didn't get this as a movie. Like, this would have been such a great MCU movie, and I'm so sad we didn't get it. Have they, did they not use, like, pieces of it, or...? No. No? No, okay. not really. Okay. It's really too bad. when you mentioned the suit... Yeah, we got that. Yeah, it's like, oh, maybe there were other parts of Iron Right. Maybe Whiplash is a major... Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. But he shouldn't even have been Whiplash, because Anton Vanko was the Crimson Dynamo, who was also in this. Ah, okay. Yeah, but, I mean... Come on. So, so Whiplash's <laughs> backstory, maybe? Uh, no. Is? No. Oh, no. It no. doesn't matter. The whole thing about his well, dad. Crimson Dynamo shows up in this, and it doesn't matter who's in the suit. In fact, yeah. it doesn't matter to, the, to such a degree that there's another villain who's also Russian who wears a suit called the Titanium Man, and there's another guy in the Titanium Man suit, but not the original Titanium. Like, it doesn't matter who's in them. Right. Okay. Iron Man, of course, is joined by his loyal best friend, Jim Rhodes, who at this point is not War Machine. Mm. And I think we talked about this before, but Dave McElhinney invented Jim Rhodes and never wanted him to put on an Iron Man suit. Right. He liked the idea of Iron Man having a regular guy friend who helps him 
in regular guy stuff. Yeah. Now, ironically, Rhodes is never in a story that Michelinie writes where he doesn't fly a helicopter or a jet. So it's like he's just around a bigger suit of armor that's more <laughs> well, clunky. Yeah, but he's... But it's normal. Yes. It's a thing yeah, that it's, happens it's today. It's so unnormal because it's like, quick, get the helicopter. And then he gets it very quickly. Or right. use the helicopter in this story. Use the helicopter to get to the jet and meet me at this location. And then he does. And it's like, but you know, you know how long it takes to get all that shit ready to go? And like, you're a regular guy. Yeah. You're not a card-carrying member of the Avengers who yeah. can skirt... FAA regulations. Yeah, but the book needs Jim Rhodes to be at this place where Iron Man is, and Iron Man has a suit. Right. How the hell is Jim Rhodes going to get there fast? And someone He's finally take the went, jet. put him in a damn Iron Just Man put suit. Him in an Iron Seven Man hours suit. later. Sorry, I I try. I had to jump on a commercial flight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Airport a, security. I take the red eye problem. from f through friggin' Houston and. Oh, man. I saw that. Problem damn it, Jim! Six I needed you. Ago. <laughs> well, where were you? Where were you? Uh, well, maybe you should give me a goddamn suit. <laughs> So Iron Man does this thing, and he meets up with Jim, and they're having a good time. That's it. It's just, it, it, the story opens with whatever. Who cares? Yeah. So Iron Man's tinkering with the armor that belonged to a former adversary whose name was Force. That was his, that was his villain name. Uh, mm -hmm. A.K.A. Clay Wilson, who turned over a new leaf and then joined up with Stark. Like, Stark hired him. Okay. And, oh, uh, good for him. Yeah, exactly. And he made up a new name. And is just kind of like integrated into life. Of course, he'll become Force again, but you know, for right now, Force is turned over newly. Is he where Force Works comes from? No. Oh. <laughs> no, I think it's more just that like Stark at one point or another realizes that Force works, and so he <laughs> names it after his team. Okay. I I I was hoping. I, I know. Like, oh, that would explain That's the Force, Force Works thing. Yeah. Nope. Nope. It's just. You know, he'd been unemployed for a while, and yeah. then he, he got himself a job. Yeah, so force works. Force now. works. This Finally. is the this is the uh, time when Iron Man is not really all that popular. Oh, very much. Okay. Because yeah. I was gonna say, if, isn't that most of the time? It's most of the time. Right. It's like from its inception up until about Civil War. If I was a supervillain <laughs> or any kind of villain, and rather than being taken into the police, the superheroes were like, hey. How about you come work for us instead? Mm -hmm. I'd think I was the hottest shit in the world. Yeah, right. That's yeah. Be like, work. Everything's coming up me. <laughs> Force works. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that Clay is not like had the biggest head right no, now. No, he's amazing. You know, he's really cool, and Stark is a total dick to him later. So <laughs> God damn it. Tony's working on his armor, he's just tinkering around, and he notices something, and he's like, wait a minute. And then we cut to later, and Jim is going to check on Tony because he's been gone for a while. Mm -hmm. And when Jim opens the door, Tony has trashed his office, and he's tearing apart, like, everything. And he's got a crowbar, he's just breaking shit. And Rose is like, dude. Stark's like, I found in Force's armor a code that indicates that his armor used templates from the Iron Man suit. Oh, so he, somebody like yeah, stole man. his designs? Yeah. That like, yes. That, that essentially huh. Force stole Iron Man's tech and used it to augment his own suit. And of course Force used to be a like domestic terrorist. Right. So people died on his watch. And so Stark's like all about taking blame for his weapons oh being used God, against him. Oh my God, dude. Right. So he's like, no! And then he's like, wait a minute. Clay couldn't have been smart enough to do it by himself. <laughs> right. It must have been Justin Hammer, who was recently created that back in Demon in a Bottle. Mm. So he's, you know, evil industrialist who's looking to destroy Stark. Get in line. There's a bunch of those characters. <laughs> There's another one in here, too, who's like literally just, we didn't want to put Justin Hammer in here the whole book. So here's right. another one. <laughs> right. But in the real world, there's lots of evil industrialists. Exactly. <laughs> Look, everyone will steal your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and what's funny is Stark didn't patent the Iron Man design. Mm. Because well, he can't. wasn't gonna sell it, right? He right. Well, no, you can, but like patents are public knowledge. Right. People could see yeah. the schematics. So, they'd and so forth. tell him they'd be like, "Oh, you're Iron Man." Well, no, he built the suit for Iron Man. He hired the guy who plays Iron Man. Oh, I assumed it would just be like, if I if I patent this, everyone's gonna know that I'm Iron Man. I'm sure he was worried about that as well, but he's mostly worried about the suits designs falling in the wrong hands. There are other people out there with suits of armor. There's like a ton of Iron mm -hmm. Man clones out there. Are they all from me? Are they all Did from I me? Did I create, am I like Batman? Like yes. creating the These villains? Super villains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, or but at least augmenting them. 
Iron Man then is more Batman because literally I created my villains. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like with Batman, it's like people say that, but yeah, like Batman didn't create like the <laughs> Penguin, right. the Riddler. He didn't provide them any support, no. of any kind. No, Those of people showed up, but these guys, yeah, they literally are using without it. They wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Why is yeah. Doctor Doom on that page? <laughs> because <laughs> because Tony uses the data from the Avengers West Coast because the West Coast is way cooler. Uh, their databanks to basically like create an algorithm to predict how many be armored villains must have derived some semblance of technology from Stark's initial design. Doom uses Stark tech? He theorizes that Doom may use Stark Didn't tech. did Doom predate Iron Man? Absolutely. <laughs> but, but Doom doesn't have oh, the same clunky his, armor. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, at some point, he incorporated some vague portion of Stark mm -hmm. tech into his suit. Yes. The Beetle, who is like an industrial espionage type character. I remember us talking about the Beetle. We talked about the Beetle. Yeah, we, we've talked about the Beetle. Yeah. Shockwave, Doctor Doom, Stiltman, the Crimson Dynamo, Titanium Man, the Mauler. Stiltman just gets tall. Yeah. Yeah. His legs are stilts. That's that's his whole game. He is <laughs> he is a Daredevil villain. He is a Spider Man villain. You understand? I can get uh, things off the tall shelves, and I can walk away pretty quickly. Yeah. Literally, like Stiltman is in this book for like maybe two pages. <laughs> like where Stiltman is like. I didn't need to bypass the alarms because no one would set up an alarm for like the the eighth story of this building. And so he just <laughs> goes up to the top. The where... one scenario where still the <laughs> stars. <laughs> in the land of low security, the man with stilts for legs is king. You're no, lame, stilt man. I'm suction cup man. I already climbed this building. <laughs> oh damn it! I'm ladder man. I got here before <laughs> suction cup man. Hey, are we joining the party? I'm parachute man. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Need more practice on these Close. things. <laughs> so Tony's going to go on like a personal vendetta to stop them. Right. And hunt down anyone who has Stark like, what, like Stark arm. purge their like data banks of... Well, look, right now, like, right now, it's information, it's just, man. I know. It's out there. That comes up. That comes up. Don't oh, worry. Okay. They address that. So Tony's like, before I just freak out as Iron Man and start punching people I don't normally punch, mm. I'm going to have to try the law. Okay. So he calls up Marcy, his head of PR, who is also banging Rhodes, and she is, she's just so fun. She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> she is a go-getter who was given an opportunity to work for Stark and immediately at every opportunity she's banging roads to get closer to Stark to, mm. to be able to finagle her position into a higher position of authority okay. in the company. Ultimately, of course, What like, a terrible stereotype. I know. <laughs> but she, uh, she, she gets fired and then she goes nuts. Mm. And becomes like a villain. Oh, jeez. But, uh, but for now, Marcy's just Rhodes' girlfriend who... We assume they like each other, but every time that, like, they are going to go out, you know, she's like, you gotta give me something, Jim. Tony's going off the reservation, and he's freaking out. What are we gonna, he's, he's like, you know, it's Tony. He runs the company, and he's my friend, and I'm not gonna argue with it. And she's like, well, I guess I've got a headache. Why don't you get out of here? <laughs> and he's like, right on. So you never see them having a nice time in their relationship. No. <laughs> Marcy's whole deal in this, in, in this part of the story was she's like, you know, do a demonstration for the for the army. They mm -hmm. want you to do a PR stunt where you like you 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 show that their tech that you help them make is like stronger than Iron Man, you know. Like, <laughs> but it's not. It's not. No. But like show them that it is yeah, because you know boost their egos a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your tanks are so big. That's literally it. That's that's it. And he's like, no, I don't have time for that. I gotta go. I gotta go stop all these people from getting killed from my shit. Right. But I can't say that because Iron Man's my bodyguard. Right. So. Eventually, Rhodes, like, massages him enough to be like, why don't you take your mind off it and do something stupid? And he's like, okay. So he goes and does. And so... I'd love it if he was just, hey, hey, who wants to go for a drive? Come on, man. We're going to drive up the coast, see some waves, get some girls, get some food. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Okay. All right. Real, before, real quick, though. we got to stop. we got to stop here really quick. <laughs> why don't you put on your Iron Man suit? I don't want to put it in the trunk. <laughs> Damn it, Jim! <laughs> Is, Marcy put you up to this, didn't he? I thought we were going to the park! <laughs> Well, well, take me to the vet! If we have time to go to the park, we'll totally go. <laughs> so, they introduce the Devastator, which is just a tank that doesn't need a person that shoots lasers. There's two of them. Uh, there's and, two of them? Yeah. And, uh, and, and 
they have chains attached to the tanks and Iron Man's there and he's just, you know, uh, they drive away from him and he's like, oh, they're oh really no. strong. I can barely keep them from, from pulling me apart. But but I but I can. Absolutely. They're not well, going to pull me while apart. While he's doing this absentmindedly and the generals are like, ladies and gentlemen, look at how hard it is for Iron Man. It's like, <laughs> he's like recapping what's already happened and he's thinking about like how many people have died because of him. And he just absently just, just, just pulls them apart and smashes the tanks <laughs> together and they are destroyed. And they're like, what the hell was that? And he's like, Bill Stark, and like, we will! And then he leaves. <laughs> Those were laser tanks! Those cost like $20 billion! Unmanned? Are you kidding me? Hey, at least they're unmanned. Yeah. Yeah. At least I didn't kill anybody. Oh god, not again! Oh, except for oh, all the suits oh, that I made that oh, killed me. Oh, no, 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 no. stolen from me. Yeah. So Stark is just trying to take it easy, and Marcy's like, um, please don't do that anymore. And he's like, right on. You're the one who wanted me to go. You should have known I'm dangerously <laughs> really, unstable. <laughs> Well, she doesn't know it's him. I'm a, you know I'm a recovering alcoholic, right? <laughs> she doesn't know he's right, Iron Man. That he's Iron Man. But yeah, that's true. So uh, Iron Man... Like, and Rhodes hasn't told her? No. No. Wow. He's cool. He's a bro. Oh, all right. So, so Iron Man, like... So Tony calls up, like, an old girlfriend, and they go see a movie that was, like, really bad and was real that came oh, out yeah? called Dark Angel. Just a shitty Charlie Bronson-type movie. Yeah, okay. And he's watching that and watching people, like innocent people die, he makes him freak out and he bails on his date and he oh just, he like lets her get into his limo. She really tries to bang him and he's like, no, I'm not in <laughs> not it right mood. now. Yeah. Like so. He, I think that was also a TV show with Jessica Alba. That was a TV was, show with yes, Jessica yeah. Alba. Yeah. yeah, it would become one like that, 20 years that after that this book. That launched her career. Yeah. 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 That made me like Jessica Alba. Yeah. Oh, really that one? Dark I don't know Angel? what. I don't yeah. know what made me aware of Jessica Alba. Fantastic Four? No, no, no. I was aware she existed before oh. Fantastic Four. I was like, oh, they cast Jessica Alba. That's a good idea. She's a hotness now. Like, she's a big actor. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what else she was in before. It might have been just Dark Angel. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so Stark is uh, laying uh, awake in bed, and he's just, he's just so overwhelmed with his guilt that he calls Clay, formerly Force. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he's just like, hello? And he goes, how many people did you kill? And he's like, uh, what? He's like, as Force, how many people did you kill, Clay? And he's like, dude. I, you don't ask that question. I'm trying not to think about it, man. And he's like, ah, and he hangs up. He's like, that was really not cool of me. <laughs> I probably may have triggered him into becoming Force again. Like, he doesn't say that, but he did. So, I better kill him to be safe. <laughs> oh, no, not again. <laughs> Go kill him again. <laughs> so Stark meets up with another character that like you wouldn't know if you weren't reading Iron Man at the time named Abe Zimmer. And Abe Zimmer is like a tech whiz that works for a company that like is a Stark subsidiary called AccuTech. And it's basically just like a way for Stark to keep a really smart, capable, like tech genius in his employ mm. and like off the books. Like, no, no, no Abe Zimmer runs AccuTech. Right. Yeah. But he also like does off the books Iron Man shit for me. Mm -hmm. And so, so Abe knows. Okay. Abe is probably almost certainly aware. But I didn't get any indication from Armor Wars at least that he doesn't go like, well, you looks like your old pal Iron Man might be in a big bit of pickle. No, it's just, you know, whatever you need me to do. And so he's I, like his Lucius Fox. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. But he's like, I need to hack Hammer Industries and steal knowledge of how like all the data that he has on the right. Iron Man suits and who he might have right I need to know how to. far it's spread exactly yeah. exactly so he I like the concept of them that. hacking it being like all right cool we're gonna hack this company in the early 80s yes well I'll get the hacksaw and we'll just go into their <laughs> filing cabinet <laughs> they they do some stuff that like easily translates to today hmm. like because they remotely hack other right. people's stuff and I'm like that's really cool but they did need to get their hands dirty and again, this would have been a great Iron Man movie. Like, Iron Man 4 would have been really cool with the armor wars. Basically, Zimmer's like, we need to actually get on site and, like, turn off their security triggers in order to hack their, their data banks. Okay. And, uh, so Sounds he's like, like a job for Stuntman! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not high up! It's super small, so we gotta call Ant-Man. Oh. And as you recall from Demon in a Bottle, Stark is no stranger to calling up Scott Lang and being like, hey man, you used to be, like, a thief. You want to, like, do some off-the-book shit for me? Uh -huh. And he's like, eh, I really don't want to have my daughter taken away from me again. And he's like, I promise I will throw money at your problem. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and that's happened in Demon you in the Bottle, the and it's word. happening in here. Money. Done. Money. I'm in. And so, literally, Cho like, he goes to, like, 
he goes to Lang's house. His daughter's there. She's like, hey, Uncle Tony. Like, they're, they're friends at <laughs> oh, this man. point. Because, yeah. like, I've done some illegal shit for your friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, if she's uh, calling him Uncle Tony, yeah. Yeah. They have, they have not a good relationship if that's the case. <laughs> Why? Because he's just going to throw money at them until his daughter's taken away again. Oh, yeah, no. Come on, Scott. Come on. Do this thing for me. Come, come on, on. Come on. Is this no, not enough? Time. How about now? Yeah. How about now? Ah, that's literally what happens in the scene. He's just like, dude, no, come on. I just got set up. I got a house and everything. He's like, come on. He's like, yeah, you have one house. All right. What about three houses, though? Well, he just says, like, listen, you just started your own company. You don't need to rent an office anymore if you do this job for me. And he's like, you said the magic words, man, I'm in. <laughs> and so they're leaving. And, you know, Zimmer's like, this is great. He's going to get the information I need. Or he's going to get the conduit through which I will get the information I need. And Jim's like, how you feeling, man? He's like, I feel like shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> this sucks. Like, I'm trying to absolve myself of guilt that I shouldn't be feeling in the first place mm -hmm. over the untold deaths that have occurred because of the carelessness of my design being in the hands of the wrong people. And now I'm, like, strong-arming friends who could lose more to do more shady shit for me. Yeah. But he does. Well, you're trying to fix it, at least. He is trying to fix it. and he. I, I have a, a tangential question that's please, been driving yes. me crazy. Mm -hmm. Is the design for Tony Stark just... Oats from Hall and Oats. <laughs> Stark's design will morph throughout the decades, and he will mirror whoever is like the hottest guy ah, at the time. If you so recall, yes. <laughs> in Demon in a Bottle, he was Timothy Dalton. Ant Man takes care of it, and they get right. the information they need. But Hammer Industries is like, "Oh, we got a data breach! Shut it down!" So they turn it off right before they get everything. Ah. And they, they have a, there's a glitch in the, like, file they get. So they get most of the names, but there's one name that they know exists, but they don't have the name of the last recipient mm. of the, you know, of, of the armor from Hammer Industries. Okay. Right. And so. is, is it like we have all of these characters that we can follow up on now? Yes. We know that a character called Spymaster, who is a real villain in mm -hmm. the Marvel Universe, whose job Sounds it is. familiar. To spy. No. We've no. Taskmaster. Yeah. And the ghost who would be the stand in for Spymaster in Iron Man 4. <laughs> but instead, we get Spymaster, who looks like if Deadpool really leaned into the X Men uniform a little bit. I don't know. Okay. Spymaster, his powers are he spies really well. Yeah, He's I'm a, a good spy. Kind of power. Yeah, no. You shouldn't even know my name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's his pseudonym, that's so at it. least you don't know the full name. Spymaster steals the designs, sells them to Hammer. Hammer sells uh, the designs. So Spymaster was the source of the whole exactly. thing in the first place. Yeah, he was uh, the breach. Yes. He'll be the first to die. <laughs> <laughs> Spymaster doesn't appear in Armor Wars. Wow. Oh. We just know Spymaster. Know you know why? Because he's such how. a good spy. Well, he's a great spy <laughs> and doesn't wear Stark armor. So he's like, well, my quarrel's not with you. Even though you're the cause of this. Yes. Like, you should be scouring the earth with Spymaster. Yeah, what's and yet, he going to do, though? Let's like, it, shoot him? Yeah, like, punch him in the face. Oh, uh, Stark also tries to just sue everyone into, like, not using his design. For stealing the Iron Man design that he didn't get a patent on? That's right. Oh. And they're like, um, you didn't get a patent. I mean, you can still sue, but it's yes. just a lot harder. Well, and that's and that's actually what happens in this book, where, like, oh. he sues, and his lawyers are like, okay. And so they try, and they're like, you didn't patent it. And he's like, keep trying. And they're like, okay. Okay, and but then, we need proof that you made it before that's them. That's the thing. Yeah, and they, and, he, and, well, and they essentially figure it out. Like, they do come up with a solution where they're like, we have figured out that, like, it's your intellectual property, and that's the loophole we can use. Right. But they won't hear the case for another four years. <laughs> right. Well, that's very realistic. Yeah, and he's like, ah! And that's what spurs him on to ah. become renegade Iron Man, right. who just goes on a one-man, Charlie Bronson-esque, uh, you know, attack Oh, like in the movie. Like in the movie we saw. Yeah. See, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Right. <laughs> I'm amazed he doesn't throw money at that problem. Will they hear the case now? How about now? Yeah, yeah I'm shocked okay, you are do that. Okay, you are bribing the officials. This is yeah. real bad, These Tony. These are federal judges. This is, this is ah. not good. <laughs> oh, uh, here's an extra, like, million dollars to not be bribed by anyone anymore. <laughs> if you are ever bribed by anyone else, call me and I will pay you the bribe, bribe to not take the bribe. Farther, yeah. I'll, I'll match their, I'll see their bribe You're, and, and match, I'll raise and you. I'll raise you an extra, like, ten grand. <laughs> You're a moral lighthouse, Tony. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. So, you know, Silver Centurion, he like punches one of Stiltman's legs out and he's like, oh, good thing they telescope and that's not my real legs. And just Stark like punches him and he just tips him over. Yep. And, uh, Sweet. And, and he beats him with his own legs. And, <laughs> <laughs> How's that feel? <laughs> and, and of course, Tony has figured, so, so Tony in his, ar in his armor war, yeah. he develops a technology that can track the pulse given by his tech so he can find whoever's using it okay. and track down and, and cross-reference it with the names he got. Right. And he's created a kind of like disruptor Yeah, machine. like an EMP thing. Yeah, an EMP comes up. Well, like just but, something that will shut off his technology. Yeah. Yeah. It, it will, it'll destroy it. It'll, it, like, it's oh. like a little box oh. you put on their suit and it, it like seeks out and just annihilates the stark component of their technology. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Would that render the suit inoperable? I guess it depends on what component they like stole. How yes, much? Like how much of Stark Tech did you use to make your suit? And some right. of these characters came like before they stole the Iron Man stuff, so we don't have to worry about it. Like right. so we don't have to take those villains off the board. Like Beetle augmented his suit with Stark Tech, so right. Beetle can still be a be Beetle in the future. I, Stilt Man will still be preserved. This is right. a very well, messed no stilts up in the Iron Man suit. thing. <laughs> right. It's not fundamental. I don't like this plan because Iron Man is going out and finding all of these villains. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's then just removing his tech yeah. and releasing the villain. Well, no. Well, I mean, he's if the not capturing them in the first place. It depends. Like, if, if the villain is committing a crime, he also, like, ties them up for the police or brings them to jail, whatever. Like, right. He does his thing. He the, does his thing. His main motivation is to neutralize the Stark team. Yeah, he is not Anything stopping is, like, criminals. Secondary. He is stopping yeah. them from using his technology to hurt people. If they then go get new technology... To hurt people. Right. It's well, that's not his clean. problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got no issue with that. The that's that an was... Avengers problem, yes. not a me problem. So right. there's there's one sequence where Iron Man goes to fight against Mauler, a.k.a. Brendan Doyle, who is at a Soldier of Fortune co convention. <laughs> oh, that place must be real safe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, literally Doyle just goes back to his hotel room and Iron Man's like, hey, man. He's just in his hotel room waiting for him. And Doyle's like, hello. And he goes... You have you have your you have you have you have shit in your Mauler armor. That's mine. I want it. And he goes. Here you go. Got me again, Iron Man. <laughs> and Iron Man's like, okay, thanks. And he leaves. And he's like, whoo, that was close. Like, <laughs> he doesn't fight Mauler. What? He just takes his suit out of his duffel bag and he leaves. And Mauler's like, that's amazing. Fair enough. I'm not fighting Iron Man. So. Nope. Nope. And ah, you got me. I, my Mauler suit isn't predicated on Stark Tech. So like, right. I'll just go get another one. Right. I'll just go steal another one. I'm really good at this. Right. He fights the controller whose power is controlling. Uh, what? <laughs> like, we're gonna have to explain that. We talked, a, we, we talked a little bit about the controller before in Avengers Death Trap the Vault, whatever the hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, that's right. The controller is just some asshole who's obsessed with controlling every aspect of his life and he right. develops this technology that has like this controller disc that can like the control discs. the minds yeah. of people yeah. and it's the controller's armor that has been augmented by stark tech so tony decides to stop the controller yeah you keep saying augmented by stark yeah tech, like and i'm trying to understand it, well, like, like what the hell does that mean okay so <laughs> at, like, like, let, let's, let's use an example of sure. some stark tech that tony has actually allowed to exist uh, there's a supervillain maximum security prison in the Colorado Rockies called The Vault. It is protected by green iron men called the Guardsmen. Right. Okay. S Stark Industries essentially sold, or, you know, for a song, that suits technology to The Vault's security force to make the Guardsmen. Right. Right. So that, you know, you have basically yeah, no, an entire I, security force of I iron get that. Men. That's a whole suit. Right. But... <laughs> Eventually, Stark will have a problem with that because, like, you're use. I can. I only trust myself to be Iron Man. Right. He just his circle of like trust just like shrinks down. Yeah. Until he's just like, no, nobody else but me. I'm yeah. the only one. Yeah. I am Iron Man. That's right. So eventually, you know, like he beats all these villains, and then he starts going after people who also have the technology because maybe they could use it for evil too. Right. He starts getting like paranoid. Yes. Yeah. And so. You know, eventually the guardsmen will need to get another military contractor to have guardsman armor. Right. So they go with Hammer, 
and Hammer makes basically the same goddamn thing, but right. without the Stark component. And so, as a result, there's a breakout in another story arc at the vault, and the guardsmen are helpless because Hammer's technology is just so crummy. <laughs> So like, so then like, Iron Man's like indirectly responsible for those. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. But he doesn't really see, feel bad about that. I like uh, how bad Hammer is at his job. I know he's so great. He's such a great villain. <laughs> he's fun. <laughs> yeah, but those villains' suits. Maybe the whole goddamn thing is just a recreation of the original suit, but using Stark technology. Right. Right. You know. And it's like, oh, if it's destroyed, I'll just go back to using the crappy old model. Right. It's the same thing. It just doesn't work as well. Well, maybe yes. it's like how the how the it's just not as good. Things connect yeah. like different electrodes. Or, right, like I don't may, know technology uh, shit. No, but like the the implication. Well, the the conceit is that you don't either. Right. And uh, the 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 hope is that you're like kind of just assuming that the Stark tech augmentation is like it makes it run more efficiently. It makes it stronger than it would be normally. You know, any number of things. Yeah, yeah it's a six maybe, million dollar man. Yeah, like how does Stark tech make Stilt Man function better? You yeah, specifically are, how? You are Stilt Man, and Iron Man beat you practically with one hand tied behind his back. Well, so he knows. Really, what did you need the Stark tech for? Right. What was it doing for you? What was it you? doing for you? What, what I get it doing for any of these people? I Explain. get increased height. 25% faster. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it moves a little bit faster. It moves a little faster and a little stronger. Maybe. It's probably a little bit lighter and a little stronger. Yeah, more I'll bet. You know what would have been where I would have been like, fine, that's a thing. Okay. If it was the alloy he uses in the armor, the thing that makes it super tough. Right. So everyone who's got any armor, if they're using his like alloy that he invented, mm -hmm. which like a little bit better than anything anyone else has. And that so, would have been... Sorry, good. I would have accepted the power source. The fact that it's the or the reactor. power source, yeah, because a that more efficient been a great, reactor. Again, Iron Man Four, they use the new element he invents in Iron Man Two. It gets out, yeah, and then all these other suits are right. powered by his. Yeah, and they just they run longer, or mm -hmm. they have more yep. energy to have more devastating attacks. Yes, yeah. 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 Nope. Neither of those two things yeah. would have been like a specific explanation for yes. what it is that he's that he's that he's doing. Yeah. No, it's just I guess technology. if it was an alloy, he wouldn't be able to undo it by sticking a thing on it and having and it go in and like zap it. it. So uh -huh. it's got to be like like a like circuit, circuit like, board. Yeah, and that's that seems to be what it is. It's like okay. a motherboard or something. Right. I will say, like, Controller. if you yeah. had something where it was a specific alloy, it was only created in a, one type of way, and you like broke the chemical bonds. Yes. Oh yeah. Then it would come apart. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And, yeah, then it's can, like, and you and you don't know the technology to get them back together. That's in, it. In the animated series adaptation of Armor Wars, oh. that is what, what it is. Where oh. like he puts the thing on it and the, the armor crumbles around oh. it. Oh. It like, it like squirts a chemical on it. That no, like, it no. like electricity comes out of it and it oh. just like, and then the suit just like literally comes apart in your hand. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I like how they did it on the cartoon show. I, I, and by the way, it's like scary accurate. <laughs> like I was watching it, and I'm like, "Oh my god, this is really like, this is these are deep cuts." Oh my god, Marcy's in this? <laughs> no, Marcy's not in it, and they have to use the same interpersonal drama that like didn't exist in this in that. I mean, because like Force Works was happening at the time of the ah. cartoon show, so Force Works was the supporting cast of Iron Man the cartoon show, okay. and so like Spider Woman Julia Carpenter was a member of Stark's team in the cartoon. Yeah, and so she's like the stand-in for any female romantic lead for Iron Man. Which like wasn't really the case in any of these, so you know she's a big component of the armor wars in the cartoon, and you're like, there's no way. <laughs> so anyway, he fights the controller. Controller has a fun because each one is an issue, right? So right. like, right. controller is operating a like, <sighs> it's the '80s. Michelini has a real problem with yuppies. It's a new age like meditation spa where rich yuppies go to like find themselves ah. and when they go for like their relaxation like massage the controller has like a machine that puts a controller disc on them oh yeah okay that works and so you know iron man shows up he fights the controller controllers like go get him so he's got like a like an army of a couple hundred people like attacking him yeah mm -hmm. but they're yuppies yeah well unfortunately their bones are brittle because like there's one boy who's part of them and Controller is trying to, like, get Iron Man, and a little boy, like, or a young man is caught between them and just gets crushed to death. Oh. And Iron Man's oh like, my God. oh, fuck! And he just freaks out and just yeah. starts wailing on the Controller. 
in front of everybody. Not again! Yeah, not again! I did this to keep you from dying, and someone died because of me. Literally because of me. Yeah. Like, my little this mental gymnastics was physically there. Yeah, no, now, I, he, he, he was crushed against my body. I, I if felt I it. physically wasn't there, wow. he would not have died. That's messed up. So Tony, just, you're a superhero. People are gonna die on your watch. No. It happens. Yeah. So he just wails on this dude until he's down, and then blasts out the little, like, disruptor yeah and puts it on it i'm amazed he doesn't kill controller yeah he yeah. he doesn't he thinks he might have and then he's he's breathing and he's like bully for him yeah uh, so then he leaves who i was close yeah that's... yeah so he leaves and that's when his lawyer tells him like oh it's good uh he fights a bunch of other villains like you know it's just the same thing over and over it's again. same thing just, over and over yeah. again but with different like window dressing like right. he, he fights a group called the raiders and the raiders are like a b armored group of bad guys who raid. That's what they do. You know, they go to like, you. Like in this case, they're raiding an Air Force plane full of weapons and stuff. And Iron right. Man's waiting for them and he wrecks them. Yeah. And he kicks their ass and he scares them. Okay. And then we find out that like the raiders are working for Edwin Cord, who is the Justin Hammer stand-in for this story. Edwin Cord was an Iron Man character. It's okay. not like he was invented for the story. Right, right. Like Justin Hammer was in Demon in the Bottle. <laughs> yeah. But Edwin Cord was invented, I think, uh, like 20 issues prior. And he is another douchey industrialist who was, like, ruined by Tony Stark and has a problem <laughs> with him. And because Iron Man is his bodyguard... You know, he was like, I'll destroy Iron Man. And Iron Man is, of course, like your mascot. Like, people wouldn't love Stark if not for, if not for Iron, Iron Man. Man. So I'll yeah. destroy Iron Man and you're, then I'll destroy Stark. He's the only reason you're famous, Tony. Yeah. He's going down the list. He's beating a bunch of villains. And he's still trying to figure out what that blank space is in the glitch. Right. Who is that person? Right. And he realizes that maybe another character is using his technology. And he was set up through military contracts. Like... This hero is actually a government agent, and maybe the U.S. government's involved in this too. Mm. So well, he goes after Stingray. Oh right. no, Stingray! Classic Stingray. And Stingray was an oceanographer <laughs> who became a superhero, <laughs> and he has a completely awesome costume. I love Stingray's suit. I have no interest in his character whatsoever. <laughs> I just love seeing Stingray. Well, he looks like a bird. Yep, he but he's not. Like he's a stingray. He's a stingray. I got a big arrow on my forehead, like I'm the avatar. He's got an avatar arrow on his forehead. <laughs> or a down vote. <laughs> As in, no, you will never be popular, stingray. <laughs> no, it's wow. not a down vote. It's, hey, my eyes are down here. <laughs> they aren't, though. No, they're That's right here. That's his mouth. <laughs> Uh, okay. Ah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so he, he, anyway, so Iron Man goes to deal with Stingray. But before that, he meets up with the Avengers, the West Coast Avengers, the best Avengers. And uh, they're like, hey man, what are you doing? You're like freaking out. And he's like, yeah, I am freaking out. And you're just gonna have to trust that I'm doing the right thing. Bye! <laughs> Why does he just tell them? Because he wants to keep it in the family. Like, and by the family, I mean himself. Himself, himself yeah. That's it. Yeah. I can't tell them that I lost control of my tech. Then they'll like... They won't trust me. Right. So they might kick me out of the West me. Coast Avengers. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Which of course they do. <laughs> so yeah, I can't trust them. So let me indicate how much they can't trust me. Is all this before or after, after Demon in a Bottle? Ultron. Oh, way after Ultron. Okay. He didn't create Ultron. Don't forget. Oh, he had nothing to do with Ultron. That's that Hank was, Pym's oh, cross to bear. Hank Pym, right? Yeah. In the right, movies, right, they switched it's Stark, but yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, no. Hank Pym invented Ultron, so okay. yeah, no. They have no reason to. So he not doesn't trust have him. that thing to be guilty about. No. Yeah. What a great thing to to put on your teammates. I don't trust you enough. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to trust the super me. Super secret Stark stuff. Well, and they know he's Tony Stark. Right. So like, why not just tell them? He. How are they not just putting the pieces together? Right. Because they're stupid. He's specifically like neutralizing components yeah. of because they're of not suits. they're not following that. They're just seeing that he's they're defeated. Yeah, well, well they're, they're just not seeing very him. good at their job. No, because well, everyone on that beach saw him put that thing on. Oh him. yeah, it's Tigra and Wonder Man and Moon Knight. Like no one. Yeah, like, is what are they gonna do? None of these people are detectives. Oh, don't forget Hawkeye. Yeah, I have and a Hawkeye. Bow. Isn't Moon Knight kind of a detective? No, 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 no. he's not. <laughs> people just think that because they think he's White Batman. Uh, I see. <laughs> so. Uh, Stark's like, no. And, and the reason why he does it is because he's trying to protect them from, you know, from, from getting hurt. It's like... It, from getting it, close to him. <laughs> I think it's because, I think it's because he wants to keep them from, 
like taking his absolution away. Like, no, if you defeat right. a villain, I have to make it right. Like, no, I'm making it right. It's my yeah. fault. Well, you can it's defeat the villain, but the guilt. Yeah. then you can't destroy the tech that's in their armor. You'll just you'll just arrest them. Right. Yeah. That's not my mission here. Stark like called up a friend in the earlier story and mm -hmm. went and saw a movie. And that's when he calls up another friend and plays tennis and bangs her. Well, yeah, I'm a swinging <laughs> bachelor. That's yeah. right. He's I'm just not like, gonna not like. Get laid. Get booty calls in the middle of this adventure I'm <laughs> having that I feel really guilty about. <laughs> He's like, nothing will stop me from my armor wars. Oh, I wonder if Christie's available. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to Stingray and he's like, hey Stingray, man, listen, I gotta borrow your armor. Like, don't ask me why, but just give it to me and I'll give it right back. And he's like, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Give it to you. Yeah, <laughs> just give it to me. They're not giving it to me fast enough. Give it to me faster. <laughs> so literally that happens and Singray's like, this this belongs to the US government. Like it ain't yours, man. Right. And he's like, well, I need to make sure. And he goes, well, no. And he like runs away. And so Iron Man's like, okay, what's a fight? So they fight. Yep. And he Sweet. like, he beats the crap out of him and he hits him with the thing and nothing happens. Oh. And he's like, oh, damn it. So he picks up Singray and he like puts him on a beach and he's like, hey man, listen. I'm really sorry about that, but trust me, I had a very good reason for doing it, one I will not tell you. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, I appreciate that you told me that. <laughs> Wham! Yeah. No, Stingray just goes like, well, I'll be sure to put that in the report. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the U.S. government's like, um, you attacked a government agent, Iron Man, like, you're fucked. So uh, everyone's going to Stark Industries because, of course, Tony Stark uh, employs Iron Man. Sure. And so they're like, oh, what are we doing? So Stark then holds a press conference, and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Stark is a rogue agent. No. So Tony Stark holds a press conference. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, Iron Man's a rogue agent. I don't know what he's doing, but he's freaking out. He is fired. He doesn't work for Stark Industries anymore. Uh-huh. And everyone's like, what? That's nuts. Oh, okay, but who is he, though? Because <laughs> yeah. that guy's under arrest. <laughs> yeah. That comes up later. Okay. So Iron Man beats the Beatle. Uh, you know, he breaks some things. People are like, um... You owe us all a bunch of money. He's like, well, I don't work for Stark anymore, so good luck with that. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, I'm broke. I'm, I've gone yeah. rogue. Yeah. So don't even try to bother Tony Stark about this. Yeah. All right, bye. Yeah. Oh, man, this is so much better. I should have done this years ago. <laughs> so Stark, like, he beats Beetle. He goes home. You know, he goes to his lab. His lab is like this crazy fortress. His lab is set up like Iron Man's lab in his Malibu house in the movies. Yeah. And Rhodes makes a point of being like, why don't you just move all of your Iron Man operations like in here? Like, hmm. Why is it all out here? Like, yeah, this is like a lair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, Hawkeye, you'll become a supervillain in that case. Uh, You're Hawk on the water. What are you talking about? Batman's got a bat cave and there's yeah. water. So Hawkeye calls Iron Man and he's like, You fired yourself? Dude! You can't do that. That's so stupid. Like, what if anyone looks into it? Yeah, and he goes like, well, listen. What if anyone thinks about it for two minutes? <laughs> I have a very good explanation. And they're like, what is it? And he's like, boop. And he hangs up on the clip. <laughs> so then Nick Fury shows up at Stark's office. And he's like, okay. I'm done with this bullshit. Yeah, that's enough. He doesn't know he's Iron Man, though. The oh, wow. The world's greatest super spy has right. no idea. And that's because this isn't really Nick Fury. It's a life model decoy. Oh, my God. Ugh. But Michelini didn't know that when he was writing it. So this is really Nick Fury. So I Nick was going to say, like, he can't be the world's greatest spy. He's not spy master. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Nick Fury's a better spy because he doesn't have to spy in the fucking name. <laughs> right. He doesn't have to advertise it. So, so Fury's like, listen, uh, you fired Iron Man. Good for you. But we need to go arrest him. So... I'm gonna need you to give me all the info you got on your former employee. And he's like, you got it. Here it is. Uh, Iron Man's name was Randall Pierce, and he's a total dick. Okay. And here's the whole file on him. I'm amazed he didn't sell out Clay. Yeah, it's yeah. Clay. <laughs> he used to be Forrest, but now he's Iron Man. No, it's literally, he goes, this is Randall Pierce. And he's like, um, what? Who's uh, Randall Pierce? A made up name uh... that Tony Stark created just for this experience. Right. I mean, that kind of makes sense that you would plan for this and have a whole fake yeah. persona created. Well, especially since it's not a real person. Right. right. Well, like, so try great. and find him, I dare you. The, the yeah. back and forth between, like, Fury ghost. and his agent is like, wait a minute, why would he just give us this information so willingly? Uh -huh. I don't know if I buy this. Uh -oh. and, I, and, and, and Tony Stark's like, by the way, like, I'm going to help you catch Pierce because, like, he is a renegade and, like, I love my country. But when you catch him, that Iron Man armor is mine. Like, I built it for him. 
and I want you to give it to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want you to keep it. Right. And Nick Fury's like, hmm, he had a provision. Now I buy his story. <laughs> like, that's it. God damn it. All so, right. So, like, damn they, it, Nick. <laughs> yeah, so they leave, and Jim Rhodes, like, Randall Pierce. And he's like, yeah, it's a made up name I set up, and I had uh, Zimmer, like, create a whole, like, database in the government for him. Like, they're, like he exists on paper. He's a real person. So, how, how are you going to arrest him and get your suit back? Right, right. Well, who's going to be in the suit? Well, you see, Tony Stark also invented mandroids which have also appeared in this on this couch before. Oh but mandroids God. are big gold shield weapons that are piloted by dudes that were invented by Tony Stark, and so they have Stark tech. And they could also be compromised. So he set up this whole elaborate scheme where Randall Pierce is holed up in his Long Island house that he lost when he got, lost all his money, and then he reacquired like when he got some of his money back. Uh -huh. And Randall Pierce must have known about it, and he's set up there. But... You know, because Tony Stark is, you know, wanted by so many different, like, evil industrialists, it's, like, heavily fortified. And so he's like, I think Randall Pierce is there in the Iron Man suit. So you're going to have to send the mandroids to go stop him. Right. Only the mandroids could possibly defeat Randall Pierce in the Iron Man And you're going to have to send all of them. And don't, Fury, don't hold any in reserve. Right. I love <laughs> it because Fury is like, <laughs> yes. And Fury is like, I will send a whole bunch of mandroids and a small cadre of soldiers. And Stark's like, no, it has to be the mandroids. Just mandroids. <laughs> <laughs> what right. the hell's going on here, Tony? Well, uh, what's wrong with you? No, just the mandroids. <laughs> That's so amazing. And he's like, thanks for the advice, but you're a civilian. Fuck off. If you send soldiers, they might get hurt, or killed, or crushed against my body. Yeah. I mean, well, his body. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I'm Iron Man. I'm not Iron Man. <laughs> well, if that happens, that'll be on me, right? And just me. <laughs> and, of course, on Randall. Yes, and Randall Pierce. Don't forget It'll him. It'll be on him, too. Who's a real but, person. But not you, Tony. Your conscience will be clean, because you had nothing to do with this decision. And you, <laughs> helped, and you helped us get set this whole thing up. Yeah. We're going to give you a medal. So Stark uh, goes to New York. I'm amazed he's not drinking right now. <laughs> no, that's that's the testament to his heroism. Yeah. So Stark... that's why his plans suck. I was better on the sauce. No. <laughs> so Stark goes to New York, where he looks up at Old Flame to go on a date because he's he's got to start, you know. Yep. But he don't forget. Yeah. He sleeps he's with a lot of women. <laughs> he actually doesn't sleep with her. He, uh, like, he I I replaced my booze addiction with, 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 a, with, with sex women. Addiction. Well, he goes on like a walk with her, and then he puts her in a cab, and he sends her home. No. Oh. So then he goes to... He's just showing how many friends he has. Yeah. Like, look at all these contacts he has. And he also, like, makes a point of saying, like, he misses New York. No. Oh. So he, yeah, Is that setting up, like, another plot that's going to occur later in a different yeah. book? Yeah. It will make a line. He's like, I'm on this book for a long time. Like, yeah. I got to set things up. Yeah. Like, we see Rhodes and Marcy on, like, dinner dates and stuff. Who cares? Right. Armor wars. <laughs> so, you know, the mandroids show up, and, like, <laughs> there's a couple of, like... <laughs> Instead of, like, fighting them, like, he has, like, weapon systems, like, set up that, like, come out of the ground. And, like, those little disruptor boxes that go on the... Pew! <laughs> and they just hit a couple like a of... Claymore. Yeah, they yeah, hit a, a couple Claymore of androids, but okay. not all of them. So. Yeah, yeah. so he beats all the androids, and then Fury's like, hey, Stark, he was way too prepared. Maybe you're helping him out. Mm. And Stark's like, let's, let's take a look. So he sits at, like, one of the shield control panels. And he's, like, starting to, like, pretend to do some science. Mm -hmm. And then he, like, sleight of hands a bug out of his sleeve and drops. He goes, what's this? Oh, Fury, come on, man. This whole this installation was bugged. Oh, my God. What a bunch of crap. Like, you that's people. That's how he knew that they that's were how he, they, That's how Iron Man figured it out, man. Like, it's just sitting here on top of the control panel. Next time that I need some help, I'll call the Boy Scouts. Leave. And Rhodes like, nice. <laughs> I can't believe Fury isn't like, arrest him. It's, yeah. There weren't any bugs here till you got here, man. <laughs> nope, Fury's embarrassed. Tony's in his office and he's hanging out and he is visited by Steve Rogers, a.k.a. the Captain. Um, at this point... <laughs> like Yo-Ho? No, like... Sans America. Uh, Captain America was fired from being Captain America by the U.S. government because they're like, no... You're a captain. Like, you're called Captain America because, like, we let you be Captain America in the 40s. But you're private America. Yeah, like, when you... <laughs> when you... <laughs> when you enlisted... Like, when you signed up, like, you also signed away... Like, the Captain America mantle essentially were, like, belongs to the U.S. government. Right. 
And like, if you're, you're gonna need ball, then you're gonna you can't use it. Yes. Okay. And like, I you know, Cap wanted to go into some dangerous place, and they're like, you need permission from the U.S. government. He's like, I need I need permission from nobody. I'm freaking Captain America. And they're like, uh, no. So he basically like loses the mantle. They give it to the dude who will become U.S. agent, uh, mm. John Walker. Right. And so. Captain America puts on a black version of the Captain America costume, which of course he will eventually get rid of and John Walker would eventually don. Right. And so it's great because like <laughs> Captain America is a suit that belongs to the U.S. government. So the U.S. government takes the suit away and Captain America creates a new suit, which he calls the Captain because he's no longer working for America. Yeah. He's just being a superhero. Yeah. So he has like a Captain America suit that is not a Captain America suit. And they give the Captain America suit to John Walker. So, later, John Walker will freak out and lose the mantle of Captain America. And Steve Rogers will occupy the role as Captain America again. But, John Walker will not be done being a superhero. So, he will take the Captain suit and he will become U.S. agent. So, if you're reading, like, a Marvel comic in 1987, for example, you will see a U.S. agent suit on Steve Rogers, a.k.a. the Captain. <laughs> so, John Walker just wears whatever the last suit was. Captain America War. Yes. Maybe he's got like a fetish for like being in the clothes of Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't care what it was. Yep. Yeah. So they also took the shield. Ah, and so, so he's got a new shield. Okay. Well, no, so Steve's like, hey, listen. This makes a lot more sense. What? This suit. Oh. Seeing seeing all of that. Yeah, because it looks like he had a Because just in the trench coat, outfit. it just looks like he's wearing a red and white striped shirt. Right. It looks like a pirate outfit. <laughs> yeah, you're like, he's got the U.S. agent suit. I'm like, that's not what so that is. He's wearing the trench, trench coat. coat. Yeah. And like a and like a and like a first mate's outfit or yeah. a, no, like a yeah, guy he's, swabbing the poop. He's, he's, got, <laughs> he's got buccaneer boots because Captain America wears buccaneer boots. No, he's wearing the trench coat because he's incognito. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Unless you look at his boots, and then you know exactly who he is. <laughs> or you think he's a clown. So he literally goes like, hey, listen, Stark, like, can you make Oh, he has me... another shield that doesn't have the, the symbol on it. Well, he's asking Tony Stark to make him a new shield. Oh, oh. the cover of the book gives away what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Who guards the guardsmen? <laughs> yeah. Oh. This is, by the way, the first Civil War. Oh, yeah. look, it's yeah. Iron Man versus Captain right. America. Yeah, that's cool. Is that, is that before Who Watches the Watchmen? Uh, uh No. Yeah. No. It, well, it's an expression, and Watchmen came out a year prior. Yeah. So, hmm. Stark makes a adamantium shield for Cap. Ah, okay. Cap tests out, he really enjoys it. Uh, eventually, he will ditch it and go to Wakanda and get a new vibranium shield. But oh, for and, now... And uh, Wolverine will covet this thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so then there's three shields. There's yeah. the original shield, the I... adamantium shield, and then the new vibranium, vibranium, vibranium shield. shield. Yeah, I don't know... What became of the adamantium shield? I'd like to see that. Hmm. Stark goes to Colorado to stop the guardsmen, take away their technology. Uh, he stops at like a rest area in Denver with Jim. And while he's eating, uh, he looks across the booth and Steve is sitting there. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, Steve, what's up? And he's like, hey, man, you're not by any chance going to the vault. Uh, that would be pretty messed up. <laughs> and if that were the case, I'd have to kick your ass. And he's like... Cool. Okay. Well, hey, Jim, well, we're gonna I'm get the hell out of there. here. Yeah. Well, good thing I'm not doing that. Yeah. So then, I just came here for the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> so then they leave, <laughs> and then Electro attacks downtown Denver, and the guardsmen are dispatched from the vault. They're like, how do you even get out? Right. So they catch Electro, and they bring him uh, into the vault where they uh, they put him away. And when they put him away, uh, Jim Rhodes wipes away his Caucasian makeup. <laughs> what? <laughs> And he's like, ha ha, because he's a Trojan horse. Jim is wiping away the Caucasian makeup, but he says, if any brothers saw me right now, they'd be razzing me from here to Christmas. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Tony can sneak into the vault and right. do what he needs to do. Right. Captain America, a.k.a. the Captain, is watching from the bushes. Right. Sees Iron Man go in. He's like, knew it. Goes in there to fight him. So uh, how did he find out, how did Steve Rogers find out? Well, that... Rogers knows that Stark is doing this. I see. And He's like, because I, the government... Somebody keeps wiping out all the Stark tech and that he exists Stingray. everywhere. Right. Stark gets Stingray. All that's left is these guards. Yeah, in the report. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. the, 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 he beats the guardsmen. He takes away their technology. Uh, Captain shows up and fights him. Right. And... What are you going to do against me, Tony? Yeah. I, I just have a shield. Right. Uh, he tases him. 
Oh. And uh, so Cap's just out. Oh my god. Uh, but what? Cap is like, par- he's like paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And he's awake. And there's this moment where he's just like, okay. And he like, he puts the, the machine onto the last guardsman. And as he's doing it, he has to like reach over Steve Rogers, mm-hmm. whose eyes are open and he's just staring into his face. <laughs> And no words are spoken, none are needed, for both men know that a bond has been broken today. A bond as old as their friendship, as deep as their innermost thoughts. Oh my like, god. And there is where Captain America immediately knows that one day, this motherfucker is going to turn on me the second yep. there's a piece of superhuman registration that is that is passed. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, this, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, just staring at his face. And Iron Man's like, yeah, yep. I'm going to pay for this one day. <laughs> This is not gonna, you can't go back from this. All right, I crossed Captain America. Yep. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry, I crossed the captain. Yeah, the captain. yeah I didn't yeah. beat Captain America. I yeah. beat Captain America in a weirdo costume. Oh, also, Mr. Hyde and Titania escaped. Oh, in the in the In the aftermath. In the chaos. Are those the challenges of the unknown? <laughs> no, the challenges of the unknown are from DC. These are just guardsmen oh, who are okay. not wearing their armor because that armor is destroyed. So, uh, the Avengers, the West Coast Avengers, call up Iron Man. Like, you're taking it too far. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, what are you doing? I love Moon Knight's there. He has nothing to say, nothing to contribute. Because <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't know him. I don't care. Yeah. Um, they, they, they talk to him, and they're like, listen, you got to stop. It's time to stop. And he's oh, like, well, I'm done. No, I'm not. Oh, no. No, there's still what, what, two more. Oh. But they're in the Soviet Union. So I'm going to have to actually go over to the Soviet Union and attack two <laughs> members of the state. Right. And they're like, you got to stop, man. Dude. Dude, Cold War, come on, stop. That's where we draw the line. And he's like, no, no, it's going to be cool. So he goes. Uh, And meanwhile, the Crimson Dynamo and the Titanium Man are called by the KGB to have a meeting. And they're like, listen, we know Iron Man's going to come here. So we're going to have, we're going to need you guys to like get ready to go. And Titanium Man is like, fuck you. I don't work for the state. I don't care about you. Mm -hmm. Uh, By the way, you might be wondering why the Titanium Man's operator is this tiny little guy. With a giant head. With a giant yeah, head. I was, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that. Well, because yeah. he's not the original Titanium Man. He's the second inheritor of the Titanium Man costume. This is instead a mutant named the Gremlin. <laughs> the Gremlin. And that's why the, the suit's green. Uh, no. no. It was green before was that. Green. Damn it. Was just, it just happens to also be green. Is so. he, how does he fit? Like, how does he make it work, though? If he's yeah, like, with so like tiny. a system of pulleys and left. <laughs> Here's the thing. I assumed that he's the only one that could inherit the suit because it has to be a small person. Well, was the previous, the previous occupant small? Tiny. No, no. Well, that doesn't it, make any goddamn no, they sense. Wear the, no, the original Titanium Man wore the suit like a suit of armor. Right. The Gremlin uses it like a like a mech suit. <laughs> you understand? I I look out of the tummy. Yeah. Yeah. And my hands go. No, through no, no. no. He things. probably has a periscope. Yeah, like... He looks through here and it goes up through the eyes. And I got little extensions for the hands yeah. and yeah. the feet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> But the gremlin's mutant power is he's smart. That's it. Oh. Which is why he needs the titanium man suit, because, you know. <laughs> it's like Lex Luthor with the, with the power armor. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, I'm smart, but I can't punch anything. Right. And the Crimson Dynamo is like a loyal member of the state. He believes in Mother Russia, and, he, and he's also like really close to retirement, and he's like, I need to do this because I really, really don't. I really, really don't want to die because... My retirement is going to be awesome and sweet, and most people in my position don't get to retire. Mm. So, like, I really want to keep my, my myself alive long enough to enjoy it. So Tony upgrades his stealth armor, because he's going to have to go on a stealth mission to sneak into Russia. Right. You change the color of your armor, and then you put giant rockets on it. You are no longer stealthy. No, he, he, <laughs> he ditches those. Uh, no, That's just to get him over there. Yeah, that's just to get him to Russia in a speedy fashion. Uh, wow. Originally, the plan was that Rhodes is going to help him, and he's like, no, man, I'm attacking the Soviet Union. Right. You will not walk away from this. Like, mm-hmm. I, I already have a crappy alibi, which was already a crappy alibi of a crappy alibi. Like, the original crappy alibi was, I'm his butler or his whatever, <laughs> his, his bodyguard. But now my alibi is, like, I'm this other guy who yeah. was fired. Who doesn't exist. Game, who doesn't really exist. Who, me? No, I'm just Randall Pierce. I'm you're Randall not, Pierce. You're Tony Stark. You're clearly Tony Stark. <laughs> what? I don't understand what happened after the mandroids were defeated. Did, did... Uh, oh, the people in them? Fury? Or? No, no. What, what did, Fury, did Fury just be like, well, I guess we'll never get Randall Pierce because he defeated those mandroids. I guess we'll just leave him alone. Uh, yes. 
No. No, they, he, he accused Tony of like, he's like, look, this guy defeated all the mandroids. Clearly he had help. Yeah. And then he was so embarrassed by the bug. He's like, yeah. guy's tail, tail between his legs. That's it. Yeah, and he just gave up. Yes. Yeah. But Randall Pierce is still out there. Yes, but the US government is not done. With yeah, Randall you understand. Because Nick Fury's recruiting. gonna have like a, a decade-long crusade against, against Randall, Randall Pierce, Pierce now. He's like building his case. Yeah. He's gonna do things. It's so funny to bring it up now. And he's like, what? Dude. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah, I made that up. Yeah, no, he's no, not I'm, real. I was Iron Man. <laughs> so Rhodes like, we're one with you to the end, buddy. And then, uh, you know, Stark's like, no. No, you're not. Well, he goes, okay, so take the take the chopper, go gas up the jet, and you meet me over here. And while he's like halfway doing one of those things, he just leaves. And Rhodes is like, oh, man, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I guess I can't invade the Soviet Literally Union that. now. I yeah. was going to have to come up with an excuse. <sighs> yeah, so oh, okay. <laughs> Iron Man uses his way too big and not stealthy jets to go like into the upper atmosphere and oh. then just like drop back down. He ditches them over Siberia somewhere. Right. And then- It's just he, like a booster. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Titanium Man, AKA the Gremlin, uh, set up his <laughs> set up his base of operations underneath his original base of does, operations. Does the Gremlin the work at the Kremlin? <laughs> he worked for the Kremlin. <laughs> It'd be great if he was called the Gremlin, oh. and when the KGB brought him in, they're like, you're gonna have to change your name to the Kremlin. <laughs> It'd be amazing if there was a story that was like, the Gremlin in the Kremlin. <laughs> I'm Iron Man, Gremlin in the Kremlin. Gremlin in the Kremlin. <laughs> yeah, like, there's the, the, the nukes keep being like told they're going off, and like, you know, sensors are going off, and it's because <laughs> he's living in the walls. <laughs> he's pulling wires out of things. Yeah. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> it's the worst. It's it's also old. It's such a great. It's a terrible idea today. It would have been like issue two two sixty two. So the KGB has bugged the grem the gremlin. The gremlin's oh. like talking, not monologuing to himself. Those fools. Those those Russian fools. What idiot assholes they are. And the KGB is like, what an asshole. It's, at least we know where he is. And uh, they're like, okay, so you know when when Iron Man goes to kick the shit out of the gremlin, you're gonna pop in and kick the shit out of Iron Man. And Crimson's like, all right. I guess. So, so he's like, bait. Yeah, yeah. So Iron Man pops in on Gremlin's uh, hideout. Yeah. And they fight. Crimson Dynamite goes. And he takes an extra long time. He's like, I hope may maybe they'll beat each other. Or like, whoever will win will be like mostly depowered by like the time weekend, we get there. Yeah. So he gets there and like... He fights the Crimson Dynamo. He destroys his armor. Oh. And then fights the, the Titanium Man. Um, he tries. So what, Iron Man like cuts off Crimson yes. Dynamo? Yeah, yeah. He like figures out that he's gonna come and so he well, abandons fighting. That's literally it. Iron Man like senses Crimson Dynamo uh. you, and he just bails on Titanium Man, goes up into the sky, beats Ti uh, Crimson uh, Dynamo. On, let me beat Crimson Dynamo he, real quick. Yeah, Hang hold on. that thought. <laughs> I know he wanted to wait to get here until we we're mostly depowered, but he yeah. got too early. Yep. And I'm just gonna. No, no. I'm just gonna head him off the pass. Yeah, his ass. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the script on his plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So he does, and then he goes and fights Titanium Man. Oh look, uh, he changes the color of his armor a depending armor. on where he is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now it's snow and it's white. Right. It's like camo armor. Yeah. That's cool. Like like adaptive camouflage. Right. So the uh, Titanium Man grabs Iron Man from the from behind and then flies up into the sky, and Iron Man tries to break free and he uses his like boot thrusters to like try and like break free and what ends up happening instead is his boot thrusters heat up the titanium man's armor and roasts the gremlin from within killing the gremlin oh my one more God. death tony yep directly on your hands but wow. he's russian so who cares like that's essentially how they treated in wow. the story like he's well at least he's not a bystander yeah he's just he he had it coming Damn. I don't think that that's really how Iron Man feels, but he he doesn't apologize. No, he doesn't feel bad about it. No. Right. Uh, meanwhile, well, he was a gremlin. <laughs> he was a so gremlin. what? The suit, like the 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 Titanium Man suit, just like falls from the sky yep. with the, this dead body in it. Yeah. And then Iron Man goes down, just like, chink. <laughs> 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 neutralizing thing on it. You know well, what? I'm he doesn't gonna... even do that. He doesn't even do it. I, I assume based on like how much heat the titanium man right. armor uh, took. Right. It's, it's destroyed the star. Yeah, I, 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 I don't do that. I would have loved it if like yeah, just these soldiers are just like. <gasps> Excuse me. Excuse with, the, with the stealth armor, he <laughs> yeah, just, just appears. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Yeah. Have some respect. <laughs> the man is dead. 
I did hear. I come it was. It was an oven. I'm still alive in here. <laughs> No, nobody could have survived that. <laughs> Cord, uh, I remember Edwin Cord. Oh yeah. He's in bed with Senator Boynton, who is like a, a corrupt senator who wants to defeat Iron Man. Oh, okay. This, I thought he was connected to like Russia or something. Yeah, he's like no. the guy for the movie. Yeah. 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 So uh, the Avenger, the West Coast Avengers hold a meeting with Iron Man and they're like, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, Tur- we told you not to go to the Soviet Union. What did you do? You went to the Soviet yeah. Union. Yeah, turn in your West Coast Avengers ID card. <laughs> She's like, oh no, what a shame. Uh, Here you go. Uh, so, oh no, I can't be part of the worst team ever. I'm sure at the oh, moment no. he's really upset about that. I won't be able to room with Moon Knight anymore. <laughs> a villain known as Firepower is created. Firepower was the last name on the list. Firepower. Well... What would become firepower? Uh, that would, actually the U.S. government was the last name on the, it. Was a U.S. government contract, uh-huh. but it was the creation of firepower, an agent that works for Edwin Cord, but Boynton thinks that works for him because he's the guy who pays and hired Edwin Cord to make firepower. You know, like the, this this douchey senator gets this industrialist to make their own Iron Man known as Firepower using stolen Stark tech, but Edwin Cord is like, no, this guy works for me. I see. Okay. So. Yeah, he's using the government contract to basically give his own superhero. Exactly. Superhero. It'll be his like, own Iron Man. Yes, yes, right. that's right. And Firepower is awesome. And we yeah, see like, like- covered in shit. His whole, the whole issue of his debut is him like, doing simulations of beating Iron Man, him <laughs> doing demonstrations of how badass he is, how he's got like lasers and missiles, and he's got a tactical nuclear missile on his back. What? Like he is just, he's just OP. Yeah. I'm an action figure. Yeah, he is a sweet action figure. Yep. So Iron Man's like, okay, I'm gonna have to go beat him. Boynton meets with Stark. He's like, listen, firepower is awesome. Why don't you like see You'll if never you can, beat him. Yeah, well, why don't you figure out if like you can get Iron Man to go there and then Firepower will beat him. And he's like, no, I'm not gonna help you. And he's like, well, mm. here's the thing. If you don't, like, I'll make things hard for you. And I can make things better for you. Like the government can stop. Because throughout this story, you know, Iron Man has willfully and ignorantly like destroyed people's armor, including members of the US government. And other like private citizens have also felt the brunt of Iron Man. And in fact, as Iron Man's one man vendetta through the armor wars has gone on, more anti-Iron Man sentiment has like permeated throughout mm. the entire American landscape. So everyone's yeah. like anti-Iron Man. Well, yeah, especially after that, that guppy died. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when, that, when that kid died, that was, that was real, real sad. So <laughs> Iron Man uh, is, is getting a lot of, well, Stark, because he technically is the employer of Iron Man. Right. He was on people are guard. Him for people no, it's Randall Pierce. Yeah. Randall Pierce. Come on. You know, so what? I, what people are suing the shit out of Iron Man. Oh, well, yeah. Tony Stark. Right. And so uh, Boynton's like, I kind of, Michelinie kind of dug us into a pretty deep plot hole with all these like uh, lawsuits. Yeah, that's a pretty serious thing that wouldn't just go away. So if you agree to help me trap Iron Man with uh, with firepower, we'll help make some of those lawsuits go away. Right. Some of them. Using of them. the power yeah. of the government or yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah. And Stark's like, done. So <laughs> uh, basically Rhodes, in using his patented helicopter, uh, <laughs> sets up Iron Man. So Iron Man goes, because he's like, I-, I gotta go fight firepower anyway. Right. Like, I, I might as well take the deal right. because I need to stop firepower. And Fair enough. Yeah, and Rhodes is like, dude, he's like super powerful and stuff. Look how big yeah. he is. Look at how many weird... Things he has all Look at all that stuff he's got on his suit. Yeah. Who knows what that stuff even is? Right? Like, Look, I got one missile it here. Could be it's called the ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bust this bunker. So Iron Man, like, he gets his ass trounced by firepower. Sure. And he barely escapes with his life, and he gets into the helicopter, and you know, Rhodes takes off his helmet, he's bleeding, and he's like, dude. And so they're like, okay. What would be amazing is if uh Firepower, yeah. use one of the little b- devices on Iron Man. Yes. It was just like, hey, you created this yeah. to destroy you your armor. You leave these behind. I think they, they they must destroy themselves or something. Yeah, probably. But yeah, I would love that. That would be really smart. Yeah, they take the they take the Iron Man tech out of Iron Man. Yeah. Oh. No, they don't do that. So Iron Man leaves the helicopter. He's just flying in one direction. And then Firepower launches his little nuke, which has minimal radiation. 
Nah. It's like a little nuke. So it can they could draw a nuclear explosion without people being like, oh, they just irradiated all these people. But they do say, well, it's in the it's in the desert. But they do say like mm. that it will hurt people. Like people will get sick. Right. So they hit Iron More Man. More deaths on your hand, Iron Man. So they hit Iron Man with the nuke. And wow. he dies, and his helmet like falls, and blood like spews out of the helmet. And oh. Everyone's like, "Whoa!" And oh, like, there's ketchup. And the narrator's like, "It is over. Iron Man is dead. He got friggin' nuked." And so it turns out, like Iron Man just Iron Man threed his armor, where he like yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he it's actually really gross because he realizes he can't beat firepower right now, and he wants to kind of like obfuscate the. He, he wants to get out. Right. And, like, move on. Yeah, so, so he sends a, the Iron Man suit out of the helicopter like a decoy. Yes. Um, like Before they do, mission. he and Rhodes take all the reserve blood that's on board and fill the Iron Man suit with it. So that there will be blood, and no one will question... There will be blood. Body. And no bones, <laughs> or organs, or yep. flesh. And I, I hate the idea of this empty Iron Man suit with Slushing blood around, around in it. Blood. <laughs> yeah. blood. <laughs> it is so gross. And I remember being like, well, wait, whose blood is that? Like, is it yeah, yours? Why do you have all this blood? Why would you use blood with, if they could trace any of it and it's yours? That's the end of it. They don't. Wait, Doesn't when matter. they said reserve blood, I assumed it was like blood from donations. and yeah, things. It's maybe, on the helicopter. Yeah, why do they have yeah, blood on the helicopter? Got, well, in case Tony needs blood, they got but some But it must be his egg. blood, right? No, it's no, donations. It's just they, just, they just bought it. Yeah, yeah I guess you're blood right. Type. It's, it's B negative. Now, that said, <laughs> blood only keeps for a few days. <laughs> Yeah. So you'd have to constantly be replenishing that. Just for this stupid helicopter? It doesn't matter. Just in case Tony suffers massive blood loss and needs it. Yes. So, you know, Tony's pretty much happy with it. He's like, okay. Well, that all worked we out. We killed Iron Man. And I didn't like, beat firepower, but whatever. But, and like, it, Okay, so it's just firepower. And because right. of Zimmer. I'll get him in a later book. They figured out a way to send, like, essentially a, 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 a Trojan horse virus to track where all of the schematics came from and delete itself. It's And it becomes like an algorithmic concentric loop where every time you try to access it, it like tries to access itself and like becomes this like this Mobius strip of, a, of, of code. So you can never access it. Okay. He so neutralizes the code. He neutralizes the code. So yeah. no one can ever use, like just, like just steal use, it again. Because like somebody even says like, wait time. a minute, if you break the armor, like they, they pulled it from the computer. They just have copies. Right. They'll just make more. Yeah, and Iron Man's like, yeah, no, I got something. Nah, I got I took care of that. So they did that. So uh nah, don't worry, don't worry about that. So Boyden and the government are like, well, that was great, Cord, nice job with the suit. So we're gonna take uh firepower over to this military base and we're gonna and he goes, No, no, I'm not done with him yet. And they're like, well, you don't have to be. You built him for the government. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's mine. I built him. And if you want anyone to find out about your illicit dealings with a billionaire industrialist, then by all means, continue pressing it. <laughs> and they're like, okay. So Cord uses firepower to start wrecking everything that Tony Stark runs and owns. Uh-huh. Even Accutech. Like, now Iron Man's destroyed. You don't have your bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. And like literally... You know, Stark is at like a place they're loading up stuff for you know because he's like, okay, I'm just I'm just I'm just Tony Stark now. Right. I'm, I guess I'm I'll do business. Just yeah. And Firepower shows up and he's like, hey Stark, ha, ah, <laughs> Iron Man's dead, and now we're gonna wreck all your shit. We're just gonna destroy stuff. We're just gonna break the law. Yes. Openly, and it'll, everyone will know who did it because they know who built me. Yes. Yes. What? Yes. And Rhodes is like, dude, what are we gonna do about this? And Tony's like, I have an idea. I'm gonna go home. So he does. Right. And then he proceeds and? to... What do you mean, and? <laughs> and then he proceeds to, for three pages, build the armor you will see Iron Man wear pretty much until, like, the 2000s. Right. He builds the Mark III. Yeah. Or whatever. Or whatever Mark it would be. He, there's a lot of Marks. Yeah. But he builds the, 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 the late 80s Iron Man suit. Yeah. His whole thing is, Randall Pierce died in the Silver Centurion armor. Right. This is a new Iron Man. Right. A different Iron Man. Yeah. Different no, I, dude. I hired a, a new Iron guy. Man. I hired a new guy. Yes. Because the suit's mine. And I'm Stark. I built a new suit. This guy is built, breaking all my shit. So yeah, I, 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 I hired suit. a new guy. Yep. And, uh, you know, when he murders somebody, well, then I'll make up an identity for him and we'll just keep doing this. <laughs> I can do this forever. I can do this all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who, what's, what's the guy's new name? Randall Pierce. Uh, Pierce or Randall? Uh, two. <laughs> Mark it's his II. Son. It's his, I should have known. Iron that suit Man. looks cool. It's a great suit. I love this suit. 
and it it hurts. It it, it breaks my heart because I love the Silver Centurion armor yeah. so goddamn much, and I also love the late '80s Iron Man armor. So why like, got rid of those shoulder pads? Those shoulder pads they were murder. They were too, it was too it was a little ostentatious. It was too ridiculous. But yeah. I like them because like because they're so rare. It is distinct. It's so distinct. It's visually distinct. Yeah. So. Iron Man uh, fights the, he, he fights firepower and he like, he, Iron Man blasts a trench, he throws firepower in it, he digs him up to his head, uh, uh, firepower's like, okay, I'll bust your bunker with my ex-wife, and he shoots another, he tries to shoot the other, the other uh, nuke, and Iron Man's like, it's stuck, like, I crunched the casing around it, oh. he's like, oh crap, I'm gonna blow up, Get, quick, Iron Man, Open me up, get me out, and we'll leave. And Iron Man's like, nah, no. man. He goes, nah, man, your shit's broken. I'm not getting you out of there. You're stuck in there. There's nothing I can do. And he's like, please. <laughs> and Iron Man's like, okay. So he hits it with an EMP, which dampens its circuits for a little bit. And then he, like, hacks it. Oh. He, he disarms the nuke. Okay. And everyone applauds. Yeah. And all the, pa all, the, all the, you know, bystanders are like, yay, Iron new yeah. Iron Man. Good, because... By doing that, Tony Stark would have killed yeah. thousands of people yeah. Yeah. and irradiated an area that's populated. Yeah, but yeah. this guy doesn't care. So Iron Man Whoa. has saved the day. Tony did that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they don't know they that. They don't know that's Tony. They know that's new Iron Man. Right. So new Iron Man is like, he's lapping it up. <laughs> and, then oh, yeah. he, and then he rips the armor off of firepower. And he's like, wait, wait, you could have gotten me out of here the whole time. He's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. that, and that... Cold-bloodedness of new Iron Man convinces everyone this is definitely a different guy. <laughs> yeah, old Iron Man wouldn't have done that, even though he did go rogue and was a bad guy at the end. And crushed a man to death with his armor. Yeah. And also invaded a country. Yep. And roasted a man alive. Yeah. But this guy's hardcore. <laughs> and he looks different. Don't and forget that. Mostly different. he looks different. Yeah. Mostly he looks like a newer version of the last iteration of the armor. Yeah. It's funny because, like... That always happens is that the armor gets updated, but <laughs> this is a totally different, different guy. Different guy. So then Tony's like, I guess I'm still Iron Man. But now I am going to friggin' go to sleep. Yep. Because I yep. haven't done that. Now I'm at the end of this story. Well, because he couldn't sleep the whole time. Right. Because like, there was still explained. some of his tech out there. Now yeah. he finally got rid of it. Now he can finally sleep. Exactly. And yeah, then... like on a sea of breasts, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's an epilogue. Which has a cover that I have always enjoyed. Yeah. It has art by Barry Windsor Smith, who is dope. This book is a fever dream. <laughs> it is nightmare fuel. The epilogue? The epilogue to armor to armor wars is Iron Man in his silver centurion armor inside a computer circuit, trying to stop like his his tech from escaping. Uh, and his tech materializes into like a thing, like a guy made of technology. And it basically tortures him. And then it like knocks him down into a pile of everyone he's ever slaughtered because of his negligence. Oh my God. And essentially he like, then is attacked by Iron Man and then strung up and like tortured by himself and then wakes up and he's like, whoo! That was rough. It's it's wow. just it's it's just an issue where we see really really dope art of Iron Man fighting Iron Man in like a computer circuit. And yeah. it's a great analogy cool. for what's going on in his life. And yeah. he wakes up just like, "Thank God that's over." Yeah, like it's like he conquered it, but also it's like he hasn't like, like we it's wrap it up in a, a neat little you. package like like, "Woo, yeah, I saved it." But when he, and like, we, like, he goes to sleep. Ba -da 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 -da. But we, like, see what he's dreaming about. It's yeah. like, oh my God, it is not over. Nope. He Never will be. Still messed up but, from all the stuff he had to do. But there's still a glimmer of hope because at the end he wakes up and he's like, that was messed up. I guess I need to acknowledge this happened to me and accept it's a part of me mm. and then move on. So then he falls asleep and has a better dream about breasts and chicks <laughs> and stuff. So he realizes he needs to move on, and he does? Yes! <laughs> huh. I should probably move on. There. I I've wish, moved on. I wish that were the, the case. <laughs> like, just recognizing you needed to move on. Yep. And then saying you did. Right. And that means it did. Right. That's cool. That would be cool if that's how it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if not all of us real, have a dream a that while. is a manifestation of our insecurities that attack us, and then we kill it. <laughs> 
That's true, he does kill it. So. You know, yeah, you, usually you, the manifestation of our nightmares uh, kills us in the dream. Right, right. You can't buy that kind of therapy. <laughs> this art is Are really you sure? Cool. How about now? <laughs> How about now? Oh, damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, the art is really cool and so different from everything else. Yeah. Very nice. The yeah. shame of this is that they put the new armor on the cover of this I trade. know! Yeah, it's like, you like this armor? Well, you'll see it. At the very at the end. Very well, that's the thing. That's so you crappy. spoil it. Yeah. Like, no, the yeah. whole point of this is that that's the reveal. I'm making a new armor. Well, and because you never get to see the Silver Centurion armor anyway, you might as well put, put that on. put it on the cover. They, listen, there are a lot of collections of, in, of, of Armor Wars. This is one of the cheaper ones. Mm. Like, so there are some where you see both armors mm -hmm. on the cover. As though, like, the Armor Wars are Tony Stark versus Iron Man kind of thing. And it's like, right. no. No, that's not what it is. Don't lie. Yeah, but... Like, yeah, don't lie like <laughs> Randall Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> he is a lie. He can't even, He's not even capable of lying because he is one. Yeah, that's how deep the lie goes. Yeah. But I will make a copy of Armor Wars in the description that you can pick up for cheap. Um, but, like, there's a lot of great art in here that you can that they could have pulled and made. Um, I think that the cover should be the cover for the epilogue where mm. Iron Man is roped up in wires and technology in a destroyed Silver Centurion armor because it indicates like what's gonna, what's gonna be happening. Mm -hmm. the, the armor does get destroyed. He is the Silver Centurion for most of the arc. He's tormented by his own technology. He's hoisted by his own petard, so to speak. But, but is there a helmet that's just dumping blood out? <laughs> yeah, that should be the cover. Uh. Is an open Silver Centurion armor with blood just spilling out of it like it was an elevator in The Shining. Exactly. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Just keeps coming out like he was just made of hemoglobin. Of Firepower! What did you do to him? Why was his great villain not vampires? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next week with an all new episode. Thanks a lot for watching so long. <laughs>